Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love a Mystery, Transcribed. Well, you see what you got us into? Now, Jack, you couldn't hardly say it is all my fault. I could hardly say it was all your fault. Sure, I reckon you could say it all right. Move over, Reggie, so as I can squat. Well, quiet, go ahead and squat. You knew as well as I did that the police were looking for us. Yeah, I know. And you knew that if they found us, they intended holding us as material witnesses in the Martin murder cases. Yeah. And you knew that it might be months before we'd be free. But, Jack, after what happened to Cherry and Faye, you wrote a full report on the whole business. We all signed our names to it. Yes, but I didn't say who the murderer was. But you said the killer was dead. The police weren't satisfied with that, as you quite well know. Yeah, they want you to say right out that it was Joe that killed the chauffeur and... It is Cherry who killed Job. Why didn't you say? Because we went to the Martin house to protect Grandmother Martin's interests. Her chief interest was to keep the Martin name unsullied. Besides, Faye and Hope were going to get well. Why brand them for life as sisters of a killer? And so the police were after us to make us tell what we hadn't told. Well, we were doing all right. We could have stayed right here as long as we wanted to. Never been found. But what do you have to do, Doc? Well, doggone it, Jack. You have to get yourself mixed up in a drifting poker game. But I was bored. So you were bored. That's right, I was bored. So what do you do? Well, I hunts me up a bunch of hombres and gets myself into a poker game. You take the $25,000 reward money and lose the works. Well, what you mean, I lose the work? Well, you did, didn't you? Well, I got it back, didn't I? Did I say you didn't? Well, you act like I didn't. That 25,000 potatoes is in the money belt slung around your middle, and here you are making more fuss. Yes, but, Doc, that isn't the idea. Then what is the idea, I want to know? You lost the money in a poker game, and then what do you do? You throw a gun on the game and take it back again. Well, of course I took it back again when I found out the game was crooked. How do you know it was crooked? Oh, that's just plain silly. I still want to know how you knew it was crooked. Because when Doc Long loses 25 grand in a poker game, it's got to be crooked. That's no reason. Well, it's reason enough for me. So now we're not only wanted by the police as witnesses in the Martin case, but you're wanted for robbery with a gun. By the way, where'd you get the gun? Well, one I picked up around Martin House. Well, where is it now? I made a present of it to the Chinese who runs the laundry around the corner from where we is living. Oh, but, Doc, if the police ever find it on him, he'll be in an awful hole. Well, that's what he gets for shrinking my underdrawers. <laughs> Very funny. You've not only got the police buzzing around our ears, but you've got the gang that was backing that poker game out looking for us with Tommy gun. And we're running away. You bet we're running away. Well, I don't like it. You brought it on yourself. Well, it ain't that I mind hopping freights out of town. That's kind of different. And I like things that's different. But what makes me mad is us... Up and running away from a bunch of ten horn bandits. Quiet, Jack. That belly well makes my gorge rise, too. Where's your sense? We can keep out of the way of the police so we can fight the gangsters. But you know as well as I do that we can't do both. This town's too hot, and the quicker we get out of it, the better for everybody. Well, it ain't my way. It's mine. Well, I mean, Jack, if we could get just one fast round in with the gang before we go, just to make them understand we're not leaving because we're afraid of them. Now, you're talking, Reggie. No. And I could slip up town, and I know where we could find some of them. No. Yeah. I reckon when Jack says no, that's all there is to it, Red. Apparently. Well, what time is this freight that we're catching pull out? I don't know. And we're just sitting here in this boxcar until it does? Yes. Mm, sure a nice night for dirty work. Man, is it foggy. Mm, bloody well have to keep our eyes peeled. Freight could slip by us in this soup and we'd never even know it. You know what makes me so blame mad about this? What's that? Well, here we come down to Hollywood for no other reason than to spend 25000 bucks. Did we spend it? Not one cent. Not one doggone cent. First we get mixed up in the Martin murders, and now we got to sneak out of town. I swear to my grandma, it, it's harder to spend 25 grand. Shut up. Huh? What's the matter? Somebody outside the car. Yeah. Get down behind those bales of hay. Right on. Oh, probably just one of the yard bulls. I don't care who it is. We don't want to be seen. Yeah. Are you sure, Jack? I don't hear anything. Yeah, there's somebody out there, so keep still. 
Hey, I see a flashlight. Well, hold it. Keep down. Nothing in this car but three, four bales of straw. Jack, shut up, you fool. But, Jack, I know that feller's voice. He's one of the gang. What? I'm a spanked hypnosaurus if he ain't. He flashed his light in here. He was looking for something, all right. Of course he was. Looking for us. That's great. Huh? Well, what do you mean, that's great? I mean, if the gang is that anxious to find us, they're going to be watching every freight that leaves these yards. But look here. Then maybe we'll have a go at them after all, huh, Doc? Now you're talking. How about us piling out of here right now? Listen, you two, you're playing with dynamite. Now let it alone. But, Jack, this isn't like you. Yeah, what's the matter, you fella? You act to me like you got your running shoes on. I'm telling you. If you don't get out of this town quick, we're going to end up in jail or in the slab at the morgue. You call that any way to talk? That's another thing. I don't want anybody to see us climb up on that freight. You mean they'll follow us out of town? Well, what about it, Doc? Yeah, you got something there. For 25,000 armed men, them mugs would follow us to kingdom come. Exactly. Of course, I hope they do. I'm still mad about them euchre and me into a sucker poker game. Well, forget your man. I don't want to be trailed all over the country. Hold it. What's the matter, Nam? They're back. Hot dog. Listen all right. Climb in, boys. It's him again. Shut up. Tony, your lookout. Keep a lookout for the yard bulls. Give me a foot up and then close the door. Close the door? Shut up. All right, Tony. <laughs> Shut the door. All right, you rats. Come on out. No use, Stalin. We know you're in here. There's five of us and only three of you, and we've come to do a job. So come on out and get it. You mean there's only five of you? Well, hello, Doc Law. Hello, Lefty. Honest, is that all you brung along, five? That's plenty. Come on out. Well, say we do come out. What then? Use your imagination. I ain't got much. Well, I can promise you it'll make nice, juicy reading on the front page of your hometown newspaper. And man, do I love getting my name on the front page of the newspaper. Quit stalling. What's the matter with the rest of your outfit? Are they deep and dumb? They ain't here to talk. Uh-huh. They're here for something, oh, I bet. Kind of bets you make don't mean much. Says which? You made the biggest mistake of your life when you held up that poker game. We've come to get that 25 grand and teach you better manners. Well, how about beginning? How about starting out by turning on your flashlight? No flashlight. This night's work's going to be done in the dark. It's too bad you can't do a little gun shooting, ain't it? Yeah? Yeah. On account of you going to need him, but you dasn't. On account of that, every every bull in this yard would be down on you. Knives are better for this kind of a job anyway. Yeah, knives, huh? All right, you've stalled long enough. Now come on out. Oh, we ain't quite ready yet. You're as ready as you'll ever be. Not quite. You see, my two partners is kind of maneuvering into position. What's that? Yeah. You see, all the time that we've been a-gassing, Jack and Reggie have been crawling around back of you. So we can attack front and back and kind of boil you up. You're crazy. Beat Johnny. You ready, Jack? Let's go. Hey, like that. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us See if we got them all. Oh, here, here. Well, wait a minute, Jack. I got Lefty's flashlight. Uh, here, here you are. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's all. And it's nice and mess of busted noses I ever about seen. <laughs> what do we do now, Jack? We get that lookout bird outside the car. Well, that means we got to get this door open. Give me a hand, Reggie. Christ. Uh, just a minute. When you get the door open, let me do the talking. Okay. Come on, Reggie. Open her up now. <laughs> That you, Lefty? Yeah, I'm coming down. <clears throat> sure didn't take you long to do the job, eh? No, it didn't, did it? Here's a little present for you. Sure. Get him, Jack. Yes, come on down. Help me throw him in the car. Yeah. <clears throat> come on, Reggie. Right out. <clears throat> Let me give you a hand, Jack. I'll grab hold. <clears throat> up, up with him. Yeah. Oh. yeah. All right, now push the door shut. Right. Let me get my shoes. Wait, listen. Never mind the door. Here comes the freight. Come on, get over to the track. Hey, look out. We don't get separated in the fall. There's a headlight. She's moving slow. I say this ought to do it. Yes, keep out of the headlight. We don't want the train through to see us. Let the engine get by and then start looking for an open box car. Here she comes. Here we are, Jack. 
Here's an open box car. Run for it. Get in. Hey, hurry. She's taking up speed. Make it ready. Right oh. Give me a hand, Jack. Up uh, with you. Uh, yeah, thanks. Okay, Doc. Give me a lift. Yeah. Up with you. Uh, uh, and here we are. So here you are. Hey. Oh, sir. Hey, who, who said that? I said why not? Jack, there's a girl in this box car. Why not? Doggone female, riding a freight train. Yes, I am female. A dangerous female. So watch out. I Love a Mystery first took to the air weekdays at 3.15 p.m. on NBC's West Coast Network in January of 1939. Michael Raffetto starred as Jack Packard, head of the A1 Detective Agency, with Barton Yarborough as Texan Doc Long, and Walter Patterson as the British Reggie York. The three world travelers search for action thrills and mystery, from the ghost towns of windswept Nevada to the jungles of vampire-infested Nicaragua. They righted wrongs, rescued women, battled evil, and explored unknown parts of the globe. Morse utilized threatening elements, dark jungles, bizarre rituals, strange languages, sacred amulets, thick fogs. Three characters could be murdered in a single episode. There were ancient curses, hidden panels, piercing cries in the night, and the gathering of a diverse group of suspicious people, all of whom had secrets to hide. Jack Packard was once a medical student. He shrugged off superstition in favor of logic. Reggie York was British and clever. Doc Long was a red-headed Texan. He defied the laws of chance and always had time for women. By that autumn, it was airing nationally. The show ran on the West Coast for five years, first over NBC's Red Network, then its Blue, and then CBS. Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller It is unfortunate you chose this box car Why? Because this car is occupied by the maestro and myself. That's all right. You won't bother us. But you bother us. Did you say the maestro? I did. You mean there's somebody else in this here freight car besides you? The maestro, yes. A man? A very great man. Well, what's a very great man doing riding in a box car? Yeah, and what about you? You a female hobo? That is insult. Well, why is it? Most folks that grab rides on freight trains is bindle stiff. I am not bindle stiff, I will have you know. Not, huh? No. The maestro and I have... Temporary financial difficulties. Financial difficulties, huh? That is true. Yeah, but see here, where is this maestro person? Right now, he is asleep. So you're out of cash, so you and the maestro are trying to get somewhere by freight, is that it? Yes. Business is not good. Well, just what is your business? I am dancer. The maestro is great magician. Magician? You mean one of them fellers that pulls rabbits out of a hat? Oh, pull rabbit out of hat. Well, does he or don't he? The maestro don't pull rabbit out of hat. He is great man, I tell you. The maestro, your husband? My husband? Yeah, are you and him married? That is preposterous. Oh, it is? The maestro is not married to any woman. What kind of a man do you think the maestro is? That's what we're trying to find out. Uh, that is what many people try to find out. What kind of man is maestro? 
But nobody ever has. You been with him long? Two or three years, I don't know. You been tagging at Maestro around for two, three years and you ain't married to him? I most certainly am not. That is insult to the maestro. Oh, you think you ain't good enough for him? No woman is good enough for the maestro. I am best woman there is, and even I am not good enough for I him. I say, he must be quite a chappy. Well, how about us striking a couple of matches and having a look at you? No, you do not like matches. Uh huh. Why not? Because it will disturb the maestro. What's your name? Nasha. Nasha, huh? You mind? Oh, uh, who, me? No, it's okay by me. Nasha. What is that, Russian? No, I am not Russian. Your dialect sounds Russian. I am not Russian. Nasha. Aye, that is the maestro. Nasha. Yes, maestro. Who are you talking to? I do not know. You don't know? No, I do not know. Well, find out. Yes, I will. Who are you? Well, my name's Jack Packard. One is named Jack Packard. I'm Doc Long. One is named Doc Long. And I'm Reggie York. And one is Reggie York. That is all. What are they doing in this boxcar? I do not know. Well, ask them. What are you doing in this boxcar? Just going for a ride. The one named Jack Packard say they are going for a ride. Tell them to get out. Hey, who does he think he is? He is the maestro. He say get out. Well, tell him to take a jump at himself. The one named Duck Long say, go take a jump at yourself. What's that? He say, go take a jump at yourself. Oh, he did, did he? Yes, that's what he said. Apparently, he doesn't know who I am. I guess he don't. Shall I stick a knife in him? Oh, look here. You do, and I'll whale the daylights out of you. Then what I do? You just shut up and let me go back to sleep. The maestro is great man. He needs his sleep. Hey, maestro. Uh, who said that? I did. Come on out, be sociable. Apparently, you don't know who I am. Sure, you're the maestro. Come on up the doorway. Uh, very well, very well. Anything to make for peace and good feeling. Well... How do you do? Care to sit down on the door and dangle your feet? No, I would not care to dangle my feet. Nasha? Maestro? You bring that packing box. Yes, maestro. Nasha says there's three of you. That's right. Doc here? Hi, you maestro, old kid. Reggie? My pleasure, maestro. And myself. Uh, tramps? Hey, fella. Do we sound like tramps? The packing box, maestro. Will you be comfortable? Certainly, I will not be comfortable. When was a man ever comfortable seated on a packing case? Your star has not risen yet, maestro. But it will. It will. Mm -hmm. These men say they're not traps. They want to know if I am bindlestiff. I am insult. <laughs> now, she bindlestiff, eh? <laughs> well, shucks, it is only naturally important folks don't ever ride around in a boxcar. I beg your pardon. Or well, do they? I am an important person. I am riding in a boxcar. Important, huh? Nasha here said you were a two-bit magician. I did no such thing say that. I said he is a great man. And, gentlemen, she is right. I am a great man. Don't mind admitting it yourself. I do not. I wish there was some light. I'd like to get a look at you two. Why? You sound like a pair of phonies to me. He say phonies. Shall I stick a knife in him? I'll wear the tar out of you if you do. He say phonies. You are Mr. Packard? That's right. You think, Mr. Packard, you could tell whether we are phonies if you could see us? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like us to describe ourselves. Sure. We aren't doing anything in particular. Nasha, describe yourself. Yes. I am very beautiful. I am very exotic. My hair and eyes are black as night and my mouth is red. I am straight and lithe. And my body is so flexible, I can stand straight and touch my forehead on my knees. Or I can bend backwards and touch my head to the floor. I am built like a young boy, but my legs are nicer. I am so proud of my legs, and I dance as no other girl can dance. Oh, we and hot dog. You don't believe me. Oh, sure, I believe you. Only pretty soon I'm going to wake up and take another drag on the opium pipe. It does sound a bit incongruous, doesn't it? Marsha hasn't begun to tell you her accomplishments. She says she is not Russian. She is not. She is from one of the states close to the Russian frontier. Uh, does she sound phony? Well, you'll have to admit she's hard to believe. What about yourself? <laughs> My hair is silver gray. I'm an extremely fat and ugly man. I'm neatly dressed, but shabby. I'm a sensualist, but I have strong, fine hands. I'm a magician, yes, 
But I'm more than a magician. I'm a student of philosophy, of mysticism, of, uh, of higher ethics. Are you a moral man? <laughs> I'm neither moral nor immoral. I am unmoral. I say, Maestro, what do you mean you're a student of mysticism? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, do you mind explaining? Yes, yes. Your lack of understanding would only convince you I am a charlatan. Why are you on this freight train? Why are you? <laughs> Circumstances. <laughs> exactly, my friend, exactly. <laughs> Circumstances. Hey, look, Ian. Um, how do you and Nasha here happen to be traveling around together? You're very curious about other people's affairs, aren't you? Okay, I can take a hint. On the other hand, I don't mind in the least telling you. We all need money from time to time to keep body and soul together. When finances are bad, I suffer the indignity of going on the stage to perform uh, simple acts of magic before the public. Nasha is, is part of my uh, paraphernalia. Oh, I get it. She's the girl that you saw in half and the girl that escapes from locked trunks, things like that. And I dance. That is what I like to do best. Dance. In other words, you're a common garden variety of magician with a lot of highfalutin ideas. You're trying to insult me, Mr. Packard. Perhaps. Well, you won't succeed. When you talk in that manner, I consider you stupid. <laughs> An intelligent man never pays attention to stupidity. Thanks. Well, if you're so doggone smart, go ahead and show us something. Show you something? Sure, if you're such a high muck muck in this here mysticism stuff... Go ahead and show us something. That's a very dangerous thing to say, young man. Yeah? Why? Because I might do it. Well, go ahead. What's holding you back? Nasha. Yes, maestro. Remove that cloak. Yes, maestro. Have you done so? Yes, maestro. Then lie down at my feet. Yes, maestro. There. You cannot see the girl, but she's lying curled up at my feet. Nasha? Yes, Master. You are thinking only what I am thinking? Yes, Master. You are going to let me put this rawhide leash about your neck? Yes. Yes. I stroke your hair. Stroke your hair. Now it is no longer human hair. It is the hair of an animal, the mane of a tigress, the mane of a tigress. You are going to be a tigress. When I say so, you are going to be a tigress. You are a tigress. <gasps> hey, Jack, it's snarling. <laughs> Hey, look, look, look at its eyes. Look at its eyes. They're shining. Shining in the dark. That's enough. That's enough, Nasha. Nasha, you're a woman. I am so sleepy. Sleep, Nasha. Sleep. Sleep. Don't come. I don't like it. I don't like it a bit. Now, she's asleep, gentlemen. She won't awaken. You don't need to lower your voices. <sighs> Boy, I'd darn near jump clean out of this boxcar. Well, Mr. Packard... What do you think you were doing? Just a very short uh, visit into the realm of mysticism. A very short and unimportant visit. And you want us to believe you turned that girl into an animal? <laughs> Why should you believe anything... Except what you heard and saw. It was too dark in here to see anything. But her eyes, Jack, I seen her eyes. They was blazing green and yellow in the dark. I saw that. And that horrible snarling. Yes, I heard the snarling. And you don't believe? No, I don't believe. <laughs> you don't believe your eyes, you don't believe your ears. Would you believe your sense of touch? I might. We'll see. I clap my hands twice. Hey, hey, what was that? A man has just been murdered. Murdered? Here in this boxcar? Nuts. Mr. Packard, reach over here at my feet where Nasha was lying. Well, sure. Why not? What's that? A man with a knife in his heart. You are touching the knife. Yes. A man with a knife in his heart. You believe? This isn't magic. It's murder. Murder. <laughs> 
The original I Love a Mystery run ended on December 29, 1944. A 1945 film with the same title starred Jim Bannon, Barton Yarborough, George McCready, and Nina Foch. Two more films followed with Bannon and Yarborough in 1946. Morse recorded a new radio audition for ABC in May of 1945, but the show wasn't picked up again until it was briefly revived on ABC as I Love Adventure in the spring of 1948. It lasted 13 weeks before going off the air. Directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thornton as Jack.